dear viewers in this series of programs for class 10 mathematics we are back with you with our second program on circles now remember in the first program on circles we had introduced you to the concept of circle and at the same time we had dealt with certain properties when we talked about the circle at that moment we had said that in case from a fixed point we determine all those points which are at the same distance from this given point then all these points without any gap when taken together form a circle. Now in this circle which we introduced ourselves to in the last program we found that this is the center and also we know that in mathematics we use a lot of symbols for equations you know what the equality symbol is we use the symbol for the line point and so on similarly in case we talk of a triangle we say that triangle abc and we write something like this so this symbol is for that of a triangle similarly for the circle we have a symbol and that symbol is we draw a circle freehand and put a dot in between and to identify this we use the center. If the center is C we say this symbol C means a circle with center C. Also in the last program we had talked about a circle its chord and at the same time the arc of the circle. Once again, we want to go back to those chords and then try to dwell further certain more concepts based on that. So, let us have a circle again, the center and we take the circle and let us draw a chord. If we draw this chord, and name this chord A B. Recall when we drew a perpendicular from this center onto this chord, this perpendicular bisected this chord. That is, in case I draw a perpendicular, and for drawing a perpendicular, we had used from here one arc. and another arc from here and we drew the perpendicular. And this way we had obtained this as the midpoint of A B, let us call it P, this is O. Now, the question is if I take a chord of a circle say of the same circle say this one and I take the midpoint of this chord. If I take the midpoint of this chord and join it to the circle, what do you think that small line joining the center will be in relation to the chord? That is in case I determine the midpoint of this and join the midpoint to this. Let us say this is the middle point and if I join it here. I will be getting a situation like this. Now, if this is the middle point and this chord is here say C here, there is a simple deduction that in case I join this and join this, I have taken this point say Q as the middle point. In these two triangles, I find that this is a common side, these two are equal because they are the radii and I have taken this equal to this. So, these two triangles will be congruent which means this angle and this angle should be equal. If these two angles are equal, what is their sum? They are on the same line. So, each should be of what? 90 degrees. 
if each is of 90 degrees that means this O Q which is joining the center to the middle point of this chord is perpendicular. So, in this we are having two situations one is in case I draw a perpendicular from the center to a chord then it bisects the chord and secondly if the middle point of a chord is joined to the center then that line joining the middle point of the chord to the center is perpendicular to the chord. Now, this is giving us a very useful idea what is that let us look at this figure again this center of the circle is lying on the perpendicular bisector of a b this center of the circle again is lying on this o q which we have just proved is perpendicular and passing to the middle. So, that this also is the perpendicular bisector. So, means center o is lying on the perpendicular bisector of a b and also on the perpendicular bisector of a c. This gives us a very useful tool for drawing a circle which is passing through three non collinear points. Say if I take a point a and a point b and another point c if I want to draw a circle which is passing through all these three points what do I have to do I will have to only join these points and after joining I will have to consider these to be because we are trying to draw a circle which is passing through these three points a b c. So, these have to become the chords. So, the center I just told you and we just saw will be lying on the perpendicular bisector of this and also on the perpendicular bisector of this. So, to draw this circle all that you need to do is just draw the perpendicular bisector of b c and that of a b. This is how we draw the perpendicular bisector. So, I get the perpendicular bisector of B C like this and I have to draw the perpendicular bisector of A B once again. you have to extend this arc so that the intersection is clear and let us draw the perpendicular bisector of a b. These two are intersecting here. So, if at all we are talking about a circle which is passing through the three points then that circle should have its center here and the radius will be opened up to one of the points and if I draw the circle this is going to pass through the three points is not it interesting at any way any time we are given three non collinear points mind you I am talking about the non collinear points what do you think will happen in case all three points are collinear can we draw a circle passing through such points. Well, let us see on the figure that in case I take three points which are collinear, collinear means one point here and another point here and then if I join this then this is the line three collinear point means the point C can be here or here or somewhere here. Now, we cannot draw a circle which is passing through all the three points which are in the same line. Having seen this property I am taking you back to once again the concept of central angle that we studied. Remember what the concept of central angle was let us draw a circle. When we draw this circle this was the center the central angle the concept of it was that in case I join 
the two ends of a of an arc or a chord we talked it in terms of an arc. So, I will talk about the arc if we take this arc a b and join it to the center then I get this as a central angle. Are you not curious to know what will happen in case we draw an arc and then with this arc we want to find out the angle which is some tendon on the circle not at the center. On the circle means when this arc is subtending a circle means an angle the point has got to be somewhere here. If it is any point on this part of the circle let us say that this is a point say p if I join this I get this a p b as the angle subtended on the circle. This is a o b an angle subtended at the center, this is the angle subtended at the circle. This also is known as the central angle. We want to find out what is the relation between this angle and this angle this angle and this angle. For that let us first of all just join these points P and O and extend it back to the circle. This way what have we done? This angle has been broken up into two parts one this the other this one this and the other one this. Now, look at the triangle P O B that is triangle P O B. What do you see in that? This angle if I call this R this angle B O R is the exterior angle should be equal to the sum of this and this angle. This angle B O R is the sum of this angle and this angle. Similarly, angle R O A is the exterior angle for this triangle O A P triangle and this angle is equal to the sum of this angle and this angle. Let us write it down. First we talked about B O R, this we found is the sum of let us call this angle 1, let us call this angle 2, angle 1 plus angle 2. You could write B P O and O B P, there is no harm in that. And on this side angle R O A this is equal to what? This plus this angle that is angle 3 plus angle 4. Now, if you observe in this triangle O P B this is the radius, this also is the radius. So, in this triangle when these two are the radii that means they are equal. So, angle 1 must be equal to angle 2 because it is an isosceles triangle. So, I can say that this is nothing but twice of angle 1 because 2 and 1 are equal. Likewise here this is the radius, this is the radius, these angles are equal. So, I can say that this sum is nothing but twice angle 3 that is double of angle 3. This angle is double of 1, this angle is double of this, what happens the whole is double of this whole and we arrive at a very important result that an arc if it subtends an angle at the center and another angle at the circle then the angle at the center that is the central angle is double in measure as that of the angle subtended at the circle. But here in this figure we had seen only one position 
when we found that this angle is being found by a minor arc on the major arc. What will happen in case the position is reversed? Well, let us take that situation and see what happens. We take the center and this center we once again draw the circle. The center is O and we have decided to consider a major arc. So, I consider A and this B, I am considering this arc. If this major arc is subtending an angle at the center, then the angle has to be when we join A to O and join this O to B. And we are talking of this angle, because the angle is being formed by this major arc. Any point on the remaining part of the circle will be say this one P. So, the angle that comes up is if we join this here and join this here. This is the angle formed by the major arc at the circle. You will repeat the same process that you did in the last figure. We join this P to O and have this position here. Exactly the same situation triangle B O P if I call this R then this angle B O R is the exterior angle. So, it will be equal to the sum of this and this. This angle here is the sum of these two angles and this angle here is the sum of this angle and this angle. These two angles are equal because these two are the radii angles opposite equal sides of a triangle are equal isosceles triangle property and similarly these two are equal. So, exactly what happened in the last case this angle A O R is double of this angle here that is A P O and angle R O B is double of angle B P O here means the whole angle is double of this angle. Once again the property stays the same that is the central angle is double that of the angle subtended by that arc on the circle. Now, this leads us on to a very interesting property in relation to the same situation. We have taken a minor arc, we have taken a major arc. What if I take a semicircle? All right, let us take a semicircle this time. I take this as a center and draw a circle. How do I take a semicircle? Simple, I have to only draw a diameter. So, I draw the diameter, say this one. Diameter, remember, is a chord which is passing through the center. If this is A and this is B, I can take P here or I can take P on this side because I am talking of half circle that is a semicircle, this is semicircle, this also is semicircle. Now, if I join this A to P, and P to B. And once again repeat the same step that we did in the last two cases that is a join P to O like this. Same situation again if I call this R angle A O R 
is double of this because A O R is equal to the sum of this angle plus this angle which are both equal and B O R is double of this angle because this is the exterior angle these two angles are equal. That means, this angle whole write this one this angle becomes double of this angle. What do you call this straight angle? What is the measure of a straight angle? The measure of a straight angle is 180 degrees. So, what will be the measure of this angle? 90 degrees because this is double of this. So, this gives us a very important property that is angle in a semicircle is always a right angle, its measure is 90 degrees. The same situation can give us another very important property and what will that be? For that purpose once again we draw another circle, take this as the center and from here draw a circle. this is the circle that we have drawn, O is the center, let us draw a central angle. This is a central angle, what have we just proved? If I draw this angle here, this angle and this angle how will they be related? We have just seen that this angle is going to be double of this angle, this angle double of this angle, but if I draw this angle here, say P I took here. I take P 1 here, another point this is P, this is P 1, this angle is double of this angle also we have just seen, this angle is double of this angle or for that matter I can keep on drawing angles made by this arc A B on the circle, all of these angles are going to be half of this central angle. So, what can you say about those angles? when every angle which is formed by this arc on the circle is half of the same central angle, does it not mean that all these angles are going to be equal? And we arrive at a very important result that is angles in the same segment of a circle are all equal, angles in the same segment of a circle are all equal or otherwise the angles subtended by the same arc on a circle will always be equal. Now, having seen this property we go from here because this is giving us an indication that we can have a triangle inside a circle because the moment I join this I get a triangle and then if I join this I can have a many sided figure. Is it not suggesting that we need to talk about the figures which are drawn inside a circle? let us take a circle and then talk about such figures, center and then the circle. The moment I draw a circle and then draw a figure inside it, this can be a three sided figure, and remember the polygon means or a figure that we mean polygon, the least sided polygon is a triangle, a least sided polygon is a triangle. So, if I draw a polygon inside this, here I have drawn a five sided figure that is a pentagon and the special thing that I have done about this is that all its vertices are on the circle if all the vertices of a figure are on a circle, then we say that the figure is inscribed in the circle and the circle is circumscribing this. 
we are giving you two words inscribed inscribed is the polygon and the circle is circumscribed. The circle is circumscribed to this polygon. What will happen? In case I start increasing the numbers of the sides of this polygon, this gives rise to a very interesting situation and we can see that in case this number of sides is increased, then slowly this polygon is going closer and closer as far as its circle is concerned, the circumscribed circle is concerned. And gradually, if you watch this animation, you will find that this is almost becoming a circle. And this gives us another definition, not a very exact definition, but another definition of a circle. Can I say that the circle is a polygon of infinitely many number of sides or infinite number of sides, which has got very many sides a polygon that becomes a circle. Now, we talked about inscribed polygon, we talked about the circumscribed circle. Can there be a polygon circumscribing a circle? Surely, it can be because in that case it will look like that in case I take the circle, this one, and draw a polyg polygon outside. Now, in this case, I have reversed the situation that is, the circle is inside and the polygon is outside. can join this here. We are having this P Q R S T U as a polygon which is circumscribing a circle or the circle is inscribed in the polygon. Now, these situations and other related situations now can be tackled very easily. We can always draw a circle passing through the vertices of a triangle and we can extend it to pass it through the quadrilateral. But when we talk about a quadrilateral, we will be particularly interested in our next program to talk about a quadrilateral which is inscribed in a circle and we will talk about the relation of its angles. Thank you. Mm -hmm.